this work? Mm? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our last class, right? So I know uh, everyone's tired, but uh, I I hope this is I don't know helpful, useful, and uh, yeah. So uh, okay, so. Uh, just to, to recapitulate a bit, so what we learned during this week, so we started with numeric integration, we learned how to solve our models using computer, uh, then we learned how to explore uh, parameter space, yeah? How to look at different parameters, do qualitative analysis, look at, I don't know, resonance, or look at periodic solutions, and so on and so on. And finally, we learned also how to build more complicated models in a way that doesn't feel so complicated to implement, right? So how to use this structure of matrices and so on in order to build structure models that you don't have to code by hand dozens of equations, right? So you can just use the matrix structure of the problems in order to make this uh, easy to work with, right? Uh, okay, and today uh, is uh, uh, our final lecture is going to be about how do you fit models to data, okay? How do you fit models to data? Uh, uh, I know you're thinking, right, you're telling me just, it's just on Saturday, right? Why didn't you tell me this several days ago, right? When I really needed this, you know? But actually, uh, it's end of purpose, right? Because it's uh, something that is hard to do. And, uh, and if, you, if you are able to, right, it's much easier to, uh, uh, to parameterize our models with parameters that you already have in the literature and so on, or do some, um, some kind of roundabout way of parameterizing, right? For, for instance, ah, the typical thing, I don't know beta, I don't know beta, okay, we never know beta, right? But then if you know the other parameters and you have, for instance, uh, R0 for a model, R0 for some epidemic and so on, you can use R0 to calculate beta from R0 plus other parameters. So, so you, you have some ways of parameterizing stuff without fitting to data, right? Because fitting to data is actually a, a, a pretty hard problem, okay? So it's not like, well, um, because the other classes were pretty easy in the sense of, of, you know, this is the recipe to do this, just follow this, you know, basic programming task that is copy and paste this notebook and uh, just change our equations and so on a little bit and then you more or less can run with this easily, right? So uh, this class is going to be a little bit more involved, okay? So um, so I, I think you are most of you familiar with fitting statistical models or has everyone uh, adjusted uh, a straight line to a set of points? Everyone? Or Someone er, never did this before. Who never, Who never did this before? So, well, nobody would ever raise their hand, right? So, <laughs> so but uh, well, but but I reviewed this a little bit, right? So, but but very quickly, okay. But because um, there's also people do this, but sometimes we don't discuss what it means to do this. You know, what is, what are the assumptions behind this very simple test that is okay, just fit a straight line here? But what is what does this tell me? What, what, what is the assumptions behind? Okay, so let me do a very brief, a very brief, um, uh, a very brief overview of this, right? So uh, this notebook, uh, uh, the link is in on the web page already. Okay, so if you if you go to the um, oh, well, how is this? Uh, it's right Yeah, it's over here, right? So in the ICTP web page, it's, it's over here, right? So this is, this wasn't here before, but it's now, it's today is here, okay? So I can look there, okay? Uh, okay, and, um, okay, here it is. And so, so what is, uh, so we have been talking a lot about OGE models, okay? Or, or differentiation models and so on, okay? But then uh, when you want to fit, uh, models to data, you have to take into account that the data is or can be highly variable, right? So in, when you measure something, you always have measurement errors, right? You don't have, you never have something like a perfect 
teach of the mode of sedation, right? So you don't have that, okay? So uh, you are always going to somehow have to take into account variability in data, okay? So errors, what do we call errors? But uh, er I, I, uh, the term error is kind of funny because it's not actually an error in the sense of being wrong, right? So it's, yeah, okay? So this is clear to everyone, right? So it's, we, we can say, uh, we can talk about errors, but it's in the sense of data being variable, okay? And then in order to do that, we have to use statistical models, okay? So what is, the, what is a statistical model? It's something that uh, tells me uh, how the data is, va how variable is the data, or, or, or from where does the variability in data, these, these errors, come from, you know, have to somehow model this, right? So this is the difference between a uh, uh, differentiation model and statistical model. Statistical model is a kind of a probability model, a, a, a way of errors uh, of, the, of measurements to be distributed, you know, in, t in terms of probabilities and no longer a model of, well, a deterministic model of, of this is going to happen over time, you know? Yeah, is that somehow clear? Yeah? Okay. So, uh, Okay, and we are going to use here what is called the least squares method or least squares fitting, okay? So um, the method of least squares, okay? And for this, we have essentially three modern assumptions. The first is that, uh, and this is a big one, well, well, all of them are big ones, right? But then you, d you have that variation in data, this variability that we are talking about, these errors, they all come from measurement errors, you see? So, so the idea is, well, your model, uh, the, the deterministic part of your model is perfect, and all the disagreements between your predicted values and the values actually observed comes from measurement errors, okay? Okay, uh, the second one is that the, this, the distribution of the errors, right, so the probability distribution that describes these errors are normal distributions. Yeah, everybody knows what a normal distribution is, right, yeah? Okay, uh, they are normally distributed, and also the observations, the data points that we have, uh, they are independent of each other, right? And this is um, a little bit trickier, right? So what, is, what do I mean by independent, right? Independent here is meant in the sense of, uh, in the sense of probabilities, yeah? So the probability of observing a certain deviation from the expected value in one observation uh, is independent, statistically independent, or in terms of probability of the deviation that you'll find in a different measurement, and in a different observation, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, or questions already? Do you have questions? So far, so good. Okay, so, so these, three, uh, these three assumptions are the assumptions that lead us to, to least square fitting, okay? And I will show you very quickly uh, how this, this happens, right? So, but before going to that, I'm just going to show what is least square fitting, right? And, um, and this is uh, what we have here. So in least square fitting, uh, we essentially build this, this stuff here. We have observation, a set of points that are observation data, x, i, y, i. So I have x1, y1 x2, y2, and so on, we have a series of observations of relating data x and y, okay, these points, and then you have a function f that is the model, okay, the model uh, for, so, uh, the model for, well, how is, what is the re relationship between y and x, okay? So if you have, for instance, a linear model, uh, a straight line, this f of x is just a straight line, okay, it's just a, yeah, okay, and besides this, you have parameters for this model, okay? So these parameters, A, B, C, and so on, that you have here, okay? So I even divided it by a, a comma here to say this is different from this, right? So this is the data, and these are the parameters of the model, okay? And the idea here is that you want to, ch to find the parameters here of this model such that so fitting the model to the data is finding the parameters in such a way that we find the best parameters, the, the parameters that make the model closest to the observed data, okay? Yeah, this is 
obvious, right? Okay. But then you, you could have many ways of doing that, right? So you would, instead of, you would try to minimize the distance between the points and the data, right? But usually the, 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 the most common thing to do is not do that. It's essentially what we are looking for is we're trying to minimize uh, the sums of the squares of the differences, yeah? The squares of the differences, okay? So this is why it's called least squares, okay? Least squares method, okay? Because uh, we are minimizing this quantity here, right? So we take for each point the value predict by your, predicted by your model, this is f of xi, minus the actually observed value of, the, of the, uh, that point xi, okay? Take the square and sum over all of the points uh, all of the observations here, okay? Uh, so far so good, people, yeah? Questions? Okay, so we will do this uh, using uh, SciPy, okay? So, uh, and here, um, I use this uh, new function that we hadn't used it before, this is called curve fit, okay? So this is uh, a general method for fitting uh, one dimension of functions, okay? Functions of x here, that is one dimension, okay? And uh, here I, I'm going to generate some random, some random points here. Okay, so I, I have x going from zero to ten, 40, do, 40 points over here. And now I say, well, my, my y is going to be some linear function of x. You see, some linear function of x plus some random noise. Okay, and this is the way in, in NumPy with, with Python to generate uh, samples samples from a random a normal distribution here, okay? Random samples on the normal distribution with uh, uh, this, I think, is standard deviation, I guess. Not variance. I'm not sure if this is variance or, uh, okay. Uh, better you say? Yeah? Okay. Okay. So, uh, so this is, I think this is standard deviation, yeah? And this is the number of points, right? So I have 30 points here, so I have to, to put 30 points here, okay? Okay, so this is why this is just a straight line plus some random noise, okay? And when I plot this, oops, okay. Hmm, let me, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I thought I would use this as, um, as a guess here, but it's not true, okay, so. Oh, sorry, people. So I have to go through. Uh, okay, then, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> two steps, sorry. Well, not working. Think I would you hear it? No cable. This is Wi Fi, so. Yeah, but it's not installed in this computer, right? This is not my computer. This is ICTP's computer, you know? So, yeah. So. Yeah, I think 
Okay, let's try again. <laughs> well, this is this is an issue with cloud computing, right? So you know, when you when you don't have access to the cloud, then you. You have nothing, right? So, yeah. 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 Não, mas aqui não sai do lugar, né? Tá na IFT. Você acha que a outra... Tem a... Auditório é pior aqui, né? Não funciona. É. So let's, uh, so I, I'll, I'll continue that last with what comes next, right? So because this part here is the part where I just run the model and um, I run the model and, um, and I show you the uh, straight line, okay? But then, um, of course, I, I, I guess you, of course you, you have seen this before, right? I, I have a set of points and they, they look more or less, right, like this. You have a, a, a lot of points over here. This is x and this is y. And then we find, well, which is the best line for this, right? And we'll find something that goes like this, yeah? Okay, so, um, and of course we have to learn the code to do that, okay? We, we still have to go for this. But we, we have this, this curve here, okay? So this, this is straight line here. That is, I have a model that is, my model f of x uh, a b in this case here is nothing more than a x plus b, yeah. And I find the values of a and the values of the value of b. Okay, we just fitting the model is finding a and b in such a way that this is the best line, in the sense of having the minimum uh, error, the minimum sum of the squares of the differences between uh, each point. And the model, okay? So this is, this is, these are the difference, right? These are the errors, the deviations here, okay? So these are, yeah? So my model just minimizes, I take each of these differences here, take the square and sum, okay? So my model minimizes the sum, okay? Or I'll a actually, the fitting minimizes the sum, okay? But what, why does, why, why do we take the square, right? Why, what, what does this mean, right? So let's go back to the, assumptions, right? So what we are saying here is that uh, uh, from, from where does this come from? I, I don't know if you have studied this before, but uh, the idea is the following, right? So uh, what is the, the logic between doing this square? It's, it's like this. We uh, assign to each value of A and B, okay? We assign something that is called the likelihood, okay? The likelihood is like the probability, it's, called, it's something that is the probability of um, observing the data that you have observed, given that the model is true. Does that make sense? So in reality, it's the, it doesn't work like that, but the, li the, the idea of likelihood is something like this. So if I have my model, okay, this model here is true, okay, and aside from this model, this is the, the the deterministic part here, the, the, the prediction part. Aside from this, I have this distribution of errors here being 
being a normal distribution, okay? A normal distribution. So what is the probability, so assuming that this model, uh, this model here, this model here is, is the true model, right? Yeah, okay? What is the probability of having observed all of these points like this? Yeah, so this is likelihood, okay? This is likelihood. So likelihood is going to be a probability, okay? Uh, now, what is, how do you outlay this probability? Yeah, how do you outlay this? Well, each of these observations, what did I tell you? They are independent, right? Yeah, so it means that the probability of observing all of these points is just the product of the probability of observing each of the points, okay? So this is what independent means. So it means that the likelihood will be, that is the probability of finding this, this all of these points here, yeah? Uh, given some values of uh, the function f, a, and b, okay? And this is what? This is the product, and there is this notation here that is the product of all the probabilities at each point, okay? This is the probability of x, i, y, i, given f, a, and b, okay? For each of the points, okay? So far, so good. So this is, I, I multiply so the total probability is the probability of, of observing this point times the probability of observing this point, and then this point, and then this point, and so on and so forth. Okay? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so what is the probability of observing one point here? What is it? I told you that this is a normal distribution, right? So there's a normal assumption. Yeah? So normal assumption means that this function here is a Gaussian. Okay, so I, I'll take this, and I say, wow, this is um, the product here of, what is the expression for a normal distribution? Something like this, right? So it's one over uh, square root of two pi times sigma multiplied by the exponential of what? It, this is the normal distribution, so for each point here, I have a normal distribution, it's like I have a, a normal distribution here uh, with, with mean, the mean of this normal distribution is my, the value predicted by the model, okay? So this is, I don't know why, why I tilde, that is just f of x i a b, okay? And then you have the observed value here. So for instance, this is much higher here. So this is the observed value here, right? So, yeah, okay? So this is, so you are looking at kind of each point here. At each point, I have kind of a, a normal distribution with mean at the, uh, at the straight line, okay? And then the observed point is falling either close or farther from this mean, okay? Make sense? Okay, so with this, then this is the exponential of minus uh, one over two sigma squared. Um, and what goes up here? This is yi minus f of xi ab, right? And all of this, uh, all of this here squared. Okay, so this is this is the expression for the normal where the average is the value of my straight line. Yeah, my prediction value. Yeah. Okay, people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kind of. Okay, but now this is a product of many exponentials, right? What is the product of exponentials? It's just the exponential of the sums of the exponents, okay? So this is going to be what? Well, all of these terms here, I'm assuming that all of them have the same sigma. This is not strictly necessary, but makes everything easy. So this is an awesome term here. So this is going to be one over square root of two pi times sigma to the power m, right? I have uh, n points here, from one to m, okay? And inside here, I'll have the exponential, the exponential of what? Uh, this minus one over two sigma squared is a common factor. And I have then the summation of this i here, right? So I have the, the sum over i of y i, minus f of x i a b 
squared. Yeah? So this guy here is what I told Aaron in the beginning. Yeah? This is what we are trying to minimize. Yeah? Why do we minimize this? Because we are trying to maximize the likelihood. Yeah? We are trying to, so fitting the model to data is maximizing the probability of observing this data given that the model is true. You see? Right? And then you, when you go down the calculations, right, you just calculate this, calculate this, calculate this, and so on. And well, to, to maximize this expression, this is exponential, this exponential is increasing, right? It's an increasing function, but there's a minus here, right? So to maximize this exponential, I have to maximize what is inside, but there's a minus here, so I have to minimize the sum over here. Yeah? Clear? Right? So now the, the mystery is revealed, right? How, why do why this is squared, right? So this is this is it. We are trying to maximize the likelihood under a certain set of assumptions. That is normal distribution of errors, independence of variables, uh, and uh, and only only observation errors. Okay, only observ uh, errors only coming from observations. Okay. Questions? Questions, 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 no questions. Everything is crystal clear. <laughs> yes? Okay, good. So let's try to see if, let's see if this works now, okay? So, uh, oh, looks like it's working already. Great. Okay. Hmm, just now they tell me that to be careful, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, too late, too late, too late, far too late. Okay, uh, okay, let's see if this now can run. Ah, well, I have to, to, to access my account. So. Hmm. Okay, now it's working. Let me just change here the, the thing to. This is really bad for, for looking at this in the over here, right? Or not? Is it is this better to, to look better or not? Usually in, uh, it, it's worse, but uh, I'm looking here. It looks nice actually. Yeah, it's good because usually the white white background is better for for this kind of stuff, but maybe. Maybe in this room it's okay. Yeah? Okay, so let's just see. Yeah, everyone can see? Okay? Okay, good. So, okay, so we are trying to do this, right? So um, we have the values of x, we have the values of y. Uh, I will run this just to look at the, at the data points that are randomly generated. So when you run this on your own computer, this will be a different set of numbers, yeah? So each time you run this is a different set of numbers. This is random, okay? But it's, uh, let me reduce the text again a little bit. Yeah, Th this is it, okay? The x against y, okay? Well, that, well, this is actually wrong, right? So this is the y label. <laughs> well, it's funny the y here, right? So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, is it so a bit slow, right? That is, uh, yeah, okay, so this is it, right? So this is the set of points that I want to, to fit my linear model. So here, what do I do? How do I fit this model, right? So I have, I have x and y. There are two vectors here with the points, right? And now I define a function that I just outlined that receives the values of x and the parameters, a and b in this case, okay? And now I have a times x plus b, okay? Uh, and, okay, this is my, mod, my model predictions, okay? And now I, I just use this function here. This is called curve fit. 
replicate your RFP to provide the function. What does this function do? It receives the value of x in the parameters, and I provide also the data points, the values of x and y. And what does this return? It returns two things, the, param the parameters, a and b, and also the matrix of covariances between uh, the parameters, right? So I'll talk about this in a moment, right? And then I just print this, and then with these parameters here, the param over here, right? So this guy here contains the values of a and b, okay, a and b. So param zero, index zero is going to be a, param index one is going to be b, and now to find the predicted values, I just use the same expression of the line as before, right? I just put param zero times x plus param one. Okay, so this is just this line, okay? When I run this, and you see I'm plotting the, the points here once again with dots, and this adjusted fitted line here uh, as yij here, and here we, here we go, yeah? Okay, so this is, okay, so far so good. So what did you have to do? You just had to define a function that for each value of x and the set of parameters returns me the, uh, the predicted value, okay? Okay, good. And now we have the coefficients. And what are the coefficients here, the parameters? A is 3.6 and B is minus 0.3, right? But you see, this data, I, I do know the true values, right? Because I created this, this point, yeah? What, how did I create this point? Using uh, three and a half and minus 0.2, right? So you're not getting the true values. Yeah, there's some variability there. So uh, when you fit models, you, you always have also something that is called parameter uncertainty, okay? So you're finding some parameters, but the parameters themselves have uncertainty related to them. And how do you know this, the size of this uncertainty in parameters? Through the uh, covariance matrix, right? So this is this other thing that we have here, the param cov here, right? You see. This here is um, the elements in the diagonal are the variances uh, of the first parameter and of the second parameter. And this of the, of the main diagonal here, this is a symmetric matrix, right? Um, this value of diagonal here is uh, how correlated are the two parameters, right? So what do you expect from a straight line like this? If I increase the value of B, I put the, the line starting at a higher value, I have to, re to make it uh, less inclined, right? So I have to make the, it more like this, right? So for higher B, you have this smaller A, so they are anti-correlated, yeah? So this is why this guy here is negative, okay? This is negative, so we can learn a little bit about, a little bit more about the uncertainty of our parameters and the relationship between the estimated values from this uh, covariance matrix, okay? Okay, and if you just have a, want a very rough uh, estimation of, this is really rough, okay? <laughs> but a, a very rough estimation of uncertainty of parameters, you just take the square root of these guys here, so this is about, I don't know, 0.1, and this is about, um, uh, what is this square root of half? <laughs> is one over 1.4, it's like 0.6 or 0.7, right? Something like this, right? So this is more or less the standard deviation of your parameter estimation. So we expect um, these parameters here to be this to be off by about 0.1, and this should be about off by a standard deviation of about 0.7, okay? And this is more or less what we see here, okay? And uh, if we run this again, when I run this again, I have a new set of, uh, of values here. And when I run this again, you see I have now uh, a different value of the coefficients. Now it's, above, uh, it's below 3.5, you see? So it's, there's vari vari uh, variability also here, okay? Questions, people? Yeah, this is, this is something you are kind of have done before, I guess, some of you at least, okay. Uh, now, in most, uh, in most uh, uh, courses that we have on the, that you probably have seen before, right? Uh, there is a strong issue of, in order to be able to fit these models, okay? Uh, 
you very often, you very often has one a strong limitation that is um, uh, this method of, of least squares is much easier. It's uh, actually it's pretty easy to implement and to find the parameters and so on if your function, your function is linear on the uh, linear on the parameters. Okay, so if I look at f uh, as from the point of view of the parameters a and b, okay, from the, the parameters a and b, you see that this is linear on both a and b. Yeah, so this function is linear on the parameters, right? Uh, so if it, for instance, just me give you another example. If I have another function that now has an x squared over here, okay, this would be nonlinear in x, okay, but it is still linear on a and b. Okay, so any polynomial, for instance, even a, I don't know, 10th degree polynomial, right? If each of the coefficients of the polynomial is one of your parameters, this is still a linear function of the parameters. Because even for the, the function of x is nonlinear, as a function of the parameters, it is linear, okay? Yeah, this is a linear. So if this is linear, okay, then we know, right, we can prove that, uh, the solution, the least square uh, estimation is just uh, some solution of a linear equation that always has solutions and so on and so on. This is very easy to calculate and so on and so on, right? But in practice, sometimes you want to do, um, to, to fit functions that are non-linear on the parameters, okay? So for linear functions, there are methods that are easier than what I did here, right? But I already introduced in curve fit because curve fit does, of course it works with linear functions, but it also works with non-linear functions of the parameters. And this is probably something that you haven't studied before, okay? Because these are uh, much more challenging methods to, to work with that, uh, well, when I put it inside curve fit, I'm not looking what curve fit is doing inside, okay? So it's, it looks simple, but it's not simple at all, okay? <laughs> okay, with that, well, I'm I'm, I'm going to do something then that is, well, I'm trying to plot, to, to fit.
Yeah, works. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so what what we're going to do? We are going to pretend that the solution of OZ is just a function. Okay, it's just so we I have for instance this logistic model. Okay, logistic model uh, that has two parameters, r and k. And you also have to do some to give something else that is the initial condition. Okay, so we actually have three parameters. R, K, and initial condition. With these parameters, I have a curve, right? And now we are look, we look at this curve and we have a set of points, and we are just trying to find for which parameters I have this curve be, in the sense of least squares, the best uh, fit to those data points. Okay, so we pretend that this is exactly the same as before. Yeah, okay. Now we can do this, sure, or, or not? Uh, is it too early? Simple, right? Yeah, it's just a curve. So it's just fit this curve. So what do you have to do? Well, so let's start with looking at the data here. And now we, we started looking at real data. Okay, so this is a, a, a data set for, this is pretty simple actually. It's just you grow a protozo a protozoa in, in the lab and then you have something that grows and then saturates and the population of bacteria, of not bacteria, right? Protozoa it stay around around here, okay? So uh, you do this experiment, so you see for each point in time, from zero, two, three, four, and so on, you have a population value, okay? Uh, and just plotting this, okay. Uh, oh, this, this day, I don't know how the D got, all, got away, yeah? Okay, so, uh, now, besides the, the, the libraries we had before, we, we need OD int to iterate this differential equation. So I first start by defining the equation, the differential equation, but now what I actually need is something like what I had before, right? So what it did I have before? Given the values of x and the parameters, I return the curve, right? So this function here, it doesn't do that. It's just the differential equation itself, right? So what I need is a function that solves the differential equation and returns the curve that is the solution, okay? So I'll define another function here that, the, that is this logistic solve here that receives the values of x. Here is more convenient to call this t, right? Because it is time, uh, but it's like x, okay? And the parameters, what are the parameters? Growth rate, carrying capacity, and initial population size, okay? And what do I do? I return what? I run OG int with this function here, okay, with this function here, and the parameters, the initial condition, the times, and the as argument R and K, okay? Uh, and this OG int, it, it actually returns me uh, a two-dimensional vector, okay? It's, it's always a two-dimensional vector because it's, it's, it's a single column, but it's a two-dimensional vector, and I'm here just taking the first column, okay? That is the column of, with the population, okay? Uh, and now I just pass your fit this logistic sol over here with the values of x, that is the times, and y, that is the population sizes, okay? And then it will calculate for me the parameters, and then we take these parameters, and we just calculate this, I just use the logistic sol again, right? With the times and the values of the parameters 0, 1, and 2, okay? And then I plot this, and what do we have? We have this here, yeah? Yeah, nice. What do you think? Nice, not so nice. Yeah, looks good, right? Looks good. Okay, so so we are happy, right? So we can fit all the models, right? And it looks it looks easy. Right? But but that just by looking at this here, we already see some warnings here that didn't appear before, right? So what does this mean, right? These warnings over here, yeah? So there's one issue here that is the following, right? So uh, inside curve fit, what is it doing? It is trying to change the parameters a lot in order to, this is, remember that this is a non-linear fitting, okay? This is, of course, the solutions are not linear on R, K, and N0. This is a non-linear fitting, okay? And it tries to, to look at many different values of R and K and N0 to find the best 
the best values of the parameters, okay? So it will try a lot of different values of these guys, okay? But this is our, a different situation, right? For some values of R and K and zero, for instance, if you put R negative, you get nonsense, right? You get infinity so solutions that go to minus infinity and so on and so on, okay? So it may be trying to use parameters that make no sense. And then when this happens, usually I get this end of stuff. You, you get warnings that ah, errors of integration. Why? Because for some parameters, um, the solutions explode, the solutions don't exist anymore, and so on and so on, okay? So this is normal, okay? This is normal, yeah? Okay, okay, so let's try to do, um, um, so before, before going on, uh, questions, people. Is the, is the single clear? Yeah? Okay, so, uh, so I have some questions here, right? So the first thing is, we consider here the initial condition of our model as a free parameter, okay? Why? Well, shouldn't we just have used it? Um, because here I have a set of data and I have here, well, at the first day, day zero here, the population was equal to two, yeah? Um, shouldn't I uh, just have used it two here as the initial condition? Yeah, does that make any difference or, or what? Why didn't I just use two here as the initial condition? I could, right? There's nothing prohibiting me, right? There's no, it's not forbidden to just use two as the initial condition. But why didn't I? There, is there any r reason for that or? Yeah, but it would so restrict only to those that start at two, right? Yes, but it, it would really not be that really be doing this process because of the two. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Say, I thought it, uh, when you put this map, yeah. the map is projected by two superpositions. Yeah. So if you yeah. start with a new superposition, in the end, you are already set up in a new position. Yeah. yeah. You are only leaving the parameters outside, yeah? But, uh, uh, yeah, but I think that uh, your answer is more or less in this direction, right? Uh, in terms of ODEs, the initial condition is kind of a special point, right? Yeah? Because you usually start with the initial condition, not with the final condition and go backwards, right? Yeah? <laughs> sure? Okay. But in terms of observations, the initial condition is just one other observation, subject to errors as with any other observation. So in terms of observations, the initial condition is not different from all the other observations. So why should I treat it as special? You see? It would be errors in the initial condition as well. Okay? Make sense? So this is the main reason here for not fixing the initial condition. Okay? Of course I can do this, and I don't know if I did this or not. Down here, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, no, okay? Ah, and this is the discussion about the warnings, okay? Okay. Now, now let's do some epidemiological models, right? So, yeah? Okay, so first one, and, and this here, uh, I'm going to take some very classic, maybe uh, old examples and so on, right? But these are classic, well, it's nice to also have clean data and so on, right? I would have selected some more relevant or modern data, but uh, yeah, this is what I had at hand, right? So, so this is an example of influenza in a boarding school uh, in the 70s. I think this is a famous paper, actually, that uses this data, right? And this is like this. We have the number of beds occupied by children, okay? Uh, so... Um, 
this is nice because the population is closed, right? So this is a boarding school. This, everybody knows what a boarding school is. Is that it's that old school, school right? So where people, uh, children go and live inside the school, and they have dorm rooms inside the school, and they never leave school. You know, just like you see in old English movies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I don't think that this even exists in Brazil, right? I don't know. Uh, or maybe it does, and I never heard about it, okay? But then, uh, it's nice because it's a closed system, right? So your population is closed, uh, you don't have many interactions outside, it's just those children and so on, and you can pretty much follow every individual and so on, so you have kind of the full data in this case, okay? And now, uh, okay, so this is influenza, okay? And, uh, and the day, so we are trying to do something simple here. So we are trying to fit an SIR model. Okay, let's begin simple, SIR model. Okay, and the data you have is number of beds occupied. Uh, okay, so the first thing you have to, 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 to reflect on is uh, how does this data relate to the variables in my model? Okay, so I have an SIR model. Which, which variable of the model do I relate to the data points, right? So let me plot here the data points, right? So before, ah, I, oh, sorry, I, I, here I didn't plot. <laughs> well, I can kind of do this just omitting this, this guy here. It's just so we, just so we see the, the, the points here, okay? So this is number of days and this is number of occupied beds as a function of time, okay? Uh, how do these points relate to the variables in an SIR model? So this is a question, not a rhetorical question. Any idea? Remember, this is number of children in bed. No idea? The number of infected individuals. Why? Of course, they okay. They are related to infections, right? But um, why I exactly? Because they stay in bed for that period of time. Yeah. So it's actually the I itself in this case. Okay. Okay. Good. So, so this is actually prevalence of individuals with the disease. Okay. With with the infection. Okay. So now let's try to fit this, this stuff here, fit this model, okay? So we come here, uh, we have this, uh, these data points here, you see? So day one, day two, day three, and so on, up to day 14 here, okay? Uh, here, I will do what? I will, uh, yeah, I told you something and then I did something else here. Why did I do this, right? So here, I'm, I'm fixing the initial condition, but I shouldn't actually, right? So yeah, so maybe, yeah. So there are other stuff here before, hey, right? So I, I am saying here that I have set 763 uh, people, boys, right? And, uh, and I have for influenza that the days in bed is between five to seven days, right? So I'm putting gamma here one over five, okay? Uh, but actually, actually I need to fit both beta and gamma here. Yeah? Uh, okay. And I would probably also f fit the initial number of infectious individuals, right? But I, I, I'm going to skip this for now. Let's run this without, because here I fixed the initial condition, you see? I fixed it to the total population minus three, that is the initial three individuals that were infectious, okay? And at the beginning, no recovery, okay? And you have this, okay? So this is the SIR model. You know this by, by heart right now, right? So you don't have to, to. And what is the solution going to look like, okay? So I'm going to have, we're going to solve the SIR model with this initial condition for values of time, right? Mm -hmm. And with these parameters here, and, uh, and this solution here gives me three columns back, okay? With the solutions for susceptibles, infectious, and we're over, and we want what? We want the infectious, 
okay? Because this is what is uh, the relationship to the data, okay? So I'm returning the second column here, okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, what is the true array? What? Uh, clue. What is clue? Clue is here, right? So <coughs> it's the variable that contains the data. Right, so this is a two-dimensional variable, right? So let me, I don't know, uh, create a new, yeah, if I print clue here, you see, this is, you see? For each day, what is the number of children in badges? Just what I put it here, yeah? Okay. So it's the array that contains the data, okay? Uh, okay, and clue zero is the days, and clue one is the number of people in badge, okay? So far, so good, people, yeah? So run the audience, got, got here the infections, and now I call curve fit with this search solve function here uh, with the data that is X and Y here. So the times and the number of infectious individuals, and then I have the coefficients, and then I plot the fitted model against, together with the, uh, yeah, with the, with the points, yeah? So this is what it looks like. Yeah? Nicer or not so nice? What do you think? Yeah. Keep in mind that here I fitted both beta and gamma. Right? Fitted both beta and gamma. So we can look at the parameters that we found. Yeah? The coefficients here. So I, pr I printed it here. You see that beta is 1.7 and gamma that we found is 0.45. 0.45, right? So, so one over gamma is the average time that each student spends in bed, each child spends in bed. So one over the parent one here, that is 0.45, is going to be 2.2, right? So we got a good fit here, yeah? But we are fitting gamma, and we found that the model estimation for gamma is just two days, and of course this is far from reality, right? So you cannot really justify this, right? So you see, if you just keep your, just say, well, if we just let the, 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 the error fit, fit all the parameters, we are going to have a good fit, sure. But this parameter, do these parameters have any relationship to reality, right? So what could you do instead? You would say, well, no, I'm going to fix the value of gamma, yeah? I will try to fix the value of gamma, right? So let's go back and say, no, no, gamma is, I don't know, one over five, okay? One over five. And now what do I do? I don't, uh, well, this is the differentiation, it's okay, but the, the function here that you're going to fit, that you're going to pass here, it doesn't receive gamma, okay? So this gamma that appears here is going to be this one here, I can even make sure of this if I put it inside here, okay? So this is like being very, very careful with, oh, why this? Uh, being very, very careful here, okay? So I'm going to use this gamma, not some fitted gamma, okay? And now I run this again, I will have only one parameter to fit that is beta now, okay? What happens? Oops, ah, ah, no, I don't. Not so nice anymore, yeah? So what happens here? It happened that with the best, uh, the best model that Earthfit was able to find fitting only beta, it wasn't so good, yeah? Well, I still have a, a, a way, one way out here, right? Because I used the initial condition from the data itself, but I, I told you that I don't have to, right? Because this is actually also an observation. So I will also pass here the initial value of infections, okay? And now instead of n minus three, I have n minus i zero and i zero over here, okay? Okay, so now uh, this is no longer at zero, this has to be uh, this guy here, right? 
So this is n minus uh, parent one, and this is parent one. So I have to adapt a little thing, a little bit this stuff. Okay, so we go again. <laughs> <laughs> So, this is crazy, right? This is crazy. All of you agree that this is crazy. So, it is even crazy. It's crazy why I, I, I gave it one extra degree of freedom and the fitting got way worse than before, right? So, what does this mean? It means that curve fit is unable to find the, the, best, the best fitting, yeah? Uh, and this is what I'm talking about when I say that curve fitting for nonlinear uh, functions is hard. Curve fit does some stuff, but it's not magical. It's not going to always find the best uh, fitting. Okay, it's not going to right. So you have to be careful, right? So how do we improve this, right? So we can improve this by giving it some hints, right? So for instance, curve fit. Receive, receives and also receives something that is called um, initial guess, right? So maybe if I do an initial guess, so what would be an initial guess for this? Um, the value of beta, I will start with, I don't know, three, and the initial value for I zero, I put a three as well, right? That is the one for the data, yeah? Maybe with these guys here, we can find something better. Let's, let's try. No. Like it's trying to begin with 100 individuals infections and beta of 0.3, right? So this is, um, this is bad, <laughs> actually. Hmm, I can try some different stuff here, but it's, now it's just a matter of guessing, right? So this is definitely wrong. Um, yeah, but maybe I'm not so sure. I, I'll have to calculate the, the residuals here to see if this is actually worse or better than the previous one, right? Because the previous one uh, without uh, I zero here, okay, with fixing I zero, uh, it was actually always above the other curve, right? And this has the advantage of sometimes being above and sometimes being below, right? So. Uh, so you see, um, the message here is, this is hard, okay? So the first plot was kind of a, a treat for you, right? So, because it looked it's simple. Because, uh, ah, well, I have, I fit beta and gamma and gives me a nice curve, but the gamma is not the correct gamma. And if I fix gamma, now I don't have a good model. I don't have a good fitting. If I try to f also fit the initial condition, now I get something that is nonsensical, right? So it's, uh, so this is the stuff here, this is the rule. And the first situation up here, right? This is the exception, okay? Yeah? Okay, so this is why I told you, well, I, I'm telling you this only today because otherwise you would spend the whole week trying to deal with this kind of stuff, you know? So I didn't want you to, <laughs> to go in that direction, you see? Okay? Okay. Uh, I have another example here. Uh, do you have questions other than the raw frustration or uh, <laughs> of this or not? Questions? So that's not how, how it works. <laughs> that's not how it works. So actually, I I, tend to, I, I did I worked on I, I worked on this particular curve before and. Um, and actually, uh, the solution for this is uh, that the SIR model is just simple. To have um, in many models where you want to fit the, uh, uh, the incidence or the, or the prevalence of, of infections, uh, to get a good fit, it's almost always, for most diseases, the case that you need to take into account incubation periods. Okay, what is the incubation period? It's the period between the person being exposed to the, to the infectious agent, agent, the virus and so on, and becoming infectious or uh, developing symptoms and so on, right? So usually, uh, if you want to go in this direction, you need to use an 
SEIR model, okay? I think, did you talk about this in a photo, SEIR? You, you no. did at some point, right? So, but but it's, it's pretty much the same, right? So it's, let me just show it very, very quickly here. Oops. So it's, it goes like this. It's, um, Air is pretty much the same as set. So you have for S minus beta S I over M, just like before. Uh, but now the guys that are infected here, the people that are infected here, they don't go to the infectious disease on parts directly. They first go to an exposed uh, compartment, okay? And after some time, uh, this exposure, there's an incubation period here, uh, and they then they become infectious, right? So you have something like, like this. And then you have the infectious individual recovering to the recovery compartments over here. Oops, no. Okay, so this is the SEIR model, right? And this is uh, because the, the growth phase of the curve and so on, it's really sensitive to this extra period here. And at least for influenza and this kind of stuff, uh, the time you spent on the incubation phase is close to the time you spend on the infectious phase, right? So this would be like several days, and this is also several days, so this time times are similar, so this makes a large impact on, on the model fitting, okay? So, uh, so the way to solve, I'm not going to do this right now because I don't think we have the time, but the, the way to solve this is trying to fitting the SEIR model instead of the SIR model, okay? Uh, well, because this is a simple example, that, so there is a solution, there's a simple solution here, okay? But in more complex cases, sometimes you don't it's not obvious, it's not simple to, to find this, okay? Uh, if we have time, I try to do this with you, okay? But uh, uh, I want you to discuss something else before, okay? So, uh, but do you have questions about this? Uh, I, I, I don't have time to analyze this model and so on and so on. Okay? Just to show you, well, this is pretty similar, but uh, we connect on parts, okay? Uh, okay. So. With this, maybe the frustration uh, turns into hope for a new model, yeah? Okay, yeah, so it's easier to deal with. Okay, okay, so last example here is an uh, example with measles in, in Niger. Uh, this is also uh, um, kind of old, but not so old, okay? Actually, I was thinking of using Brazilian data here, but uh, it was kind of messy at the time, so. Um, uh, this is uh, a city that has, this is the capital of Niger, and this is a city with about 800,000 people. But, but there's something different here that is, uh, most of the population is already vaccinated against measles, yeah? yeah uh, everybody knows what are measles? Uh, sarampo in Portuguese, yeah? Sarampo, okay. Uh, measles, okay. Uh, and now let's look at the data here. So this is data per week, okay? This is, these are weeks, not, not days anymore, right? And what is the data? This is the number of new cases, new cases per week, okay? Now, uh, I, I'm going to once again try to fit an SIR model to this data, okay? Now, what is the relationship between the model variables and the data? Question for anybody. Sorry? 
Ya. Okay, so it's incidence, so it's the rate of contagion. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not using S-E-I-R, I'm using S-I-R, with no E, okay, it's back to the, to the bad model, <laughs> okay. So how do you do this? How do you pick new cases here? Can you, can I just use the I in the model, S in the S-I-R model? Sorry? No, right? No. Why? Because the I is the prevalence of infection. It's not number of new cases. Okay? Okay, so how do we take the model and find the incidence from the model? But the derivative is at a single point in time, right? And I want the number of new cases over a whole week. So, of course, you try to, I don't know, integrate this over a week, right? But then you have to, how do you integrate this, right? So, there's something sim simpler, right? Something simpler. Uh, sorry? The difference between susceptibles from one week to the next, yeah? Yeah? Why? Because, well, people are susceptible. The only way to not be susceptible anymore is getting the infection. So, you compare susceptibles this week with susceptibles in the previous week, and the difference is how many people got infected during this week, yeah? Make sense? I think we discussed this very briefly on the first class, yeah? So this is end of a memory test, yeah, so, okay. So, uh, so, okay, so we are going to build an SIR model, so here, here we go, right, so this is gamma, uh, gamma is about uh, one over nine days, okay? But I have to multiply by seven here because my time now is in units of weeks, right? It's in units of weeks, so um, it's nine sevenths of, of a week, not of, yeah, okay? So, okay. Uh, now, the SIR model is the same that we have done a lot of times, okay? But now what I do, so this function here that I'm going to pass here, now it has to solve the SIR model, but it has to return now the number of new cases from the model, okay? So first, I take this parameter here, and now first, what, I, what are we going to fit, right? So um, I'm going to try not to fit gamma, okay? I try to fix gamma, but uh, we have the initial number of infections, individuals, I0, and the initial number of reovers individuals. What is the, this reover, right? I, I, I'm going to do, uh, I told you that there's a lot of vaccinated people in the population, right? Well, if you look at the plots here, you see that this is uh, an epidemic of measles, right? In, in a population of 800,000 people, right? If there were no vaccinated people, like the numbers here would be in the hundreds of thousands, right? It's not in the in a peak of a thousand here, yeah, okay? So most people are vaccinated, so this is a kind of a small epidemic, not a, this is, okay, this is not so small, right? Uh, a thousand cases per week is not small, but, but it's still compared to what measles would be without any vaccination, uh, this is small, okay? So there are a lot of people that are already vaccinated uh, in an SIR model, a simple way to do that is just saying, well, vaccinated, vaccinated people are resistant to the disease, so they begin already in the air compartment, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so, but we have to estimate, we don't have data on this, so we have to estimate the initial number of uh, resistant people here, right, immune people here, okay? So I set the at zero, the initial condition is the total number of people that I defined here, 800,000, uh, minus over and initial infectious, the infectious and initially reovers, okay, you are resistant. My times now, so uh, now it gets 
kind of funny, right? Because uh, here I have um, this set of points here from 1 to 31, okay? So I have 31 data points, okay? Now, if I solve my model on exactly those 31 data points, okay? I, I will solve my SR model and I'll find the value of susceptibles, infectious, and over for each of these points, okay? This is the solution of the model. But now, what do I have to do? I have to look at the susceptibles, the new cases on week two. From the point of view of the model, what, what am I going to do? I will take the number of susceptibles at week two and subtract the number of susceptibles in the previous week, in week one, okay, to, to find the number of new cases, right? But for, for the first week, what is going to happen? I don't have uh, here the number of susceptibles. I, I, in order to calculate this from the model, I have to, to have the susceptibles at the time before one, right? Yes or no? Yes? Is that clear? So what I'm going to do is, I will set the initial condition not at one, but at zero at the, at the week before, so that we can also calculate the number of new infections already in week one. Okay? Make sense or not? Yeah, so, so here, so this is end of a, a trick, right? So, so I have here that the times will not be the times that I had in the data. It's going to have those, but in the beginning I will have also, a data point one week before the, the initial point in time, okay? Okay, and now I solve this, okay, so this is the usual stuff. Solve the SR model with this initial condition, with this, this beta and gamma, I think gamma is fixed down over here, okay? And now new cases is what? I have to take the susceptibles, that is the all in zero, right? And now I shift the model, okay? So this is, I shift the numbers, okay? So these are all the numbers of susceptibles except for the last one. And this is all the number of susceptibles except for the first one. So I'm actually subtracting each value from, uh, for each value I'm subtracting the one that comes later, okay? Because susceptibles are decreasing, so this is going to be a positive number, right? So I take, this is, as zero minus s at time zero time minus s at time one, then s at time one, two minus s at time, sorry, s at time one minus s at time two and so on. Okay, th is that clear, people? Uh, uh, this is a, just a way of doing this as an array, right? Taking all the values at once, okay? So this is the number of new cases, right? Uh, I had 31 points in the data here. My simulation here has 32 points, but since I'm taking the differences here, this will once again be 31 points again, okay? So this is comparable to the data I have, okay? And now with this function here, I call curve bit, okay? With sursol and the data for times and infections, okay? And then I plot these new cases here against the data, and let's see what this gives us, okay? So, yeah. This gives us some, something reasonable, yeah? Okay, nice. Uh, is it perfect? No, you see that? Well, this decay is clearly overestimating the, the over, over here and so on, right? But uh, not terrible, not perfect, not, but not terrible, okay? And from this, you can see that the values that it estimates for parameters uh, now is something else, right? So it, uh, uh, it starts saying that uh, the initial number of infectious individuals is about one, one week before the, the data starts, okay? So it's one. Uh, it tells me that the number of uh, immune individuals in the beginning is 7.8, 10 to five. So of the 800,000 people that I had in the beginning of the total population, 7.8, 10 to 5 is, uh, <coughs> is initially uh, already immune, okay? So let, let's make this calculation here just because it's interesting, right? So if I take param 1 divided by n, so this means that I have 
coverage of it, the vaccine, okay? So this is looks good actually, right? Doesn't look bad. Okay, and what is the value of beta? Beta is 48, right? So what does this mean in terms of uh, R0, right? So R0 should be beta, that is from zero divided by, uh, divided by gamma, right? Yeah? This is the R0 for the um, SIR model, right? Well, uh, so measles are really bad, right? Yes or no? What do you think? So is this reasonable? No, right? No, no, not really. Okay, measles is very, very infectious, but uh, there's no estimate of R0 for measles above 20, right? So uh, this is pretty clearly has a problem, okay? Uh, so once again, I'll leave you with this little bit frustration of, well, it looks like the fitting makes sense because the curve is okay, but the parameters we get, we, we cannot do this with, a, with closed eyes, okay? We have to take the results and try to interpret them. If you take the parameters that you get from the fitting and just believe in them blindly, right? You are going to, to stay with some very wrong stuff, you know? So <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah? So in a sense, um, it's kind of dangerous to use model fitting if you have no idea, absolutely no idea what the real value should be because you would start believing that R0 for measles is 60, okay? Yeah? You see what I mean? So it's kind of a dangerous uh, 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 procedure here, okay? So how do you make this better, right? So this is, once again, I will recommend if you want to try this at home, to try to fit the SEIR model, okay? This will probably lead to better uh, better results, okay? Uh, okay, I think I'm finishing here, uh, but I, I still have two things to comment on, uh, actually more than two, right? But um, uh, from the technical point of view, we can include two things that are useful in curve fitting. One of them is an initial guess, right? And another is bounds, okay, or, or minimum and maximum values, values of parameters, okay? So this can be useful, for instance, to disallow it to try negative values for parameters that have to be positive and this kind of stuff. Uh, this sometimes helps, but it's no magic bullet, you know? It's no magic, uh, it may help, okay? Okay. Uh, questions? Questions so far? Okay, so a few comments to, to, to finish here, right? Some issues, right? So issues large and small, right? So there are big conceptual issues and some small issues that are more. Uh, so uh, <coughs> so the largest issue with all that I showed you here, by far, Right, so the huge issue is that I started telling you about Felicia squares, and I told you all this derivation here that came from three assumptions. Normality, normal distribution of the errors, independence of observations, and uh, what was the third? Uh, oof, blank it out here. Uh, normal, distribution. normal distribution, independence of observations, Ah, yes, and I also assumed that the errors uh, were all coming from a measurement error, right? But now, when you are looking at the solution of an OGE model, uh, it's pretty clear that the observations are not independent, yeah? Because this is a dynamical system, so uh, the value of uh, the value of the number of infections at a certain point in time is going to affect this value for later times, and so on and so on, because my model is a, 
a differential equation. So if I change the value here, it will change the, 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 the following values, yeah? Okay, so, uh, so you don't expect actually uh, that the observations are independent, right? Because what, what you expect actually, you, you expect you have uh, errors, you expect to have noise that is not only due to observation, right? Uh, so if, if, I, if I tell you, well, my, my SIR model my, or my SEIR model or whatever model I, I have, it's not going to perfectly capture the transmission of the disease. It's an approximation, okay? So you say, okay, nice, it's an approximation. There's going to be some deviation from this, sure. But what happens in real life? Suppose that, I don't know, typical epidemiological stuff. There was, uh, well, with this COVID, there, COVID data, there was a lot of this talk, right? Oh, there was, there was a party, and then there was a peak of infections because of that huge party. Uh, there was some, some, some stuff happened, and then that stuff that is not, was not accounted for in your model changed the number of infections in that week, right? So there was a larger number of infections at that week, right? So this is not an observation error. This is not a measurement error. It means that your model is wrong by something that you wouldn't predict, right? So there, was, there are, in reality, there are variations in the in the infectious process, right? So this is kind of a, a rough approximation, right? But what happens when you have this deviation between the actual, what is actually happening from your model? Well, now in the next week, you have more infections than your model predicted. And this will affect all of the development of the infection from that point forward, yeah? So each, so errors that are not measurement errors, we, we will call them errors in the process itself, right? So, uh, yeah? So these kind of errors, this kind of deviations from your model, they accumulate over time and they are changing uh, your model predictions all the time. So actually you cannot really, uh, if you want to take this into account, you cannot use uh, this squares at all, right? So you have to use other models, other techniques, other, uh, other stuff that takes into account that at each step you have an error and at each step you have to, to see if your model can predict just that step, okay, with some error. Usually this leads us to fix something that is called uh, stochastic differential equation. Okay? So there are differential equations but with stochastic errors inside them, okay, and then uh, uh, and this is a lot more work, okay. Um, I, I chose not to do this here because I won't, wouldn't have time and also it's not so easy to, these packages for this kind of stuff, they're not in, inside SciPy uh, and it's kind of hard to install them in Colab, so I, I avoided this, okay, but uh, there are packages too for this kind of stuff as well, okay. Possible to do, but it's a lot more work, okay, a lot more uh, involved. Okay, um, okay. Uh, second issue that is still quite large, okay? uh, identifiability of parameters, okay? Uh, what is identifiability of parameters? Have you heard of this before? Uh, so if you have a model with many parameters, okay? Or maybe a, not huge, but a number of parameters, okay? Uh, sometimes it can happen that you have uh, some parameters that are kind of from the point of view of the data that you observe, it is, they're kind of redundant. For instance, you can have uh, a situation where you have a beta that is large, but with already a very large number of vaccinations, or kind of the same situation if I have a lower beta, but with less vaccinations. So this leads to kind of more or less the same dynamics. But you cannot really, from the data, decide which is which, because they are strongly or related with each other, and uh, if you know one, you can fit the other, but you cannot fit them both together. They are non-identifiable by themselves. Their combination is possible to fit, but not their, like, yeah, one way to think about this is what, what happens if instead of beta here, I have um, uh, uh, a P times a B, right? When you try to fit, you're fitting the, the product P times B not each one separately, 
right? So if you try to put to plot to, to fit them together, P and D, you kind of don't have data to, to fit them separately, you know? So you see what I mean? Yeah, because what you're observing is actually the product of them, right? So uh, so this is the identifiability. The other one uh, is still large, <laughs> is that well, I thought I told you about maximum likelihoods, right? So this is pretty uh, I don't know if old school is the right word, but um, uh, it's kind of a standard method, but kind of, uh, uh, so what is my maximum likelihood does, right? So it, take, it looks at the data and it tries to find the best set of parameters, right? And this looks, well, this is obvious, right? Uh, but it's not so simple because in many cases, um, you, it's not that you go looking for model, uh, model parameters without any previous information, okay? Sometimes you, you have previous uh, uh, estima estimates of this parameter or you have other different data that already provided you with some information. You have a whole range of other things to consider and with maximum likelihood, it's difficult to incorporate uh, other previous estimates and other considerations into the model, into the estimation, okay? And to do this properly, uh, you have to use uh, these methods that are called Bayesian methods, okay? Bayesian methods, okay? I won't go into what is this and how to do and so on and so on, but this is kind of more like state-of-the-art things going this direction, right? It's not maximum likelihood, okay? Of course, you still have to calculate likelihoods, okay? but you have to take into account uh, prior distributions and so on and so on, right? I won't go into this detail, but uh, it's over there. Uh, now, this stuff here, right? This is something that we, oops, we already encountered before, right? So when we have that, when current fit didn't provide us with the best fit, okay? What is going on? Well, it finds a, a, a maximum likelihood, right? But there may be many local maxima, right? So think of this as a function in many dimensions. And it can have several local maxima. It's going to find one. And sometimes it doesn't find the one, the one that is like it, it's, it gets stuck in a peak, but there's some other larger peak somewhere. And this is a hard problem to, to solve, right? So Earthfit does its best. There are other methods besides Earthfit that, uh, that try harder, okay? And sometimes they are more useful. But you have to be aware that sometimes you won't find easily the best fit, even from uh, the maximum likelihood point of view, okay? Uh, and finally, uh, you may have that model fitting may not converge, okay? May not converge. Uh, ah, at least I had something prepared, okay? So, uh, well, just for, uh, for fun here, right? Because I tried this before, right? So, well, I, I tried this before, not with the total number error of immune people. I tried this with small error here, okay? And then I said, well, this is just n times uh, one minus R zero, yeah? So this is the number of people here that are, yeah? And this is just m times R zero, okay? So Looking at the total num number of people recovered, or the fraction of people already recovered, or immune, pretty much the same, yeah? Oh, oh, this should be smaller. Pretty much the same, right? Yes? Yes or no? It's identical, right? It's identical. But um, when I go here, and I run this again, Right? It's a identical problem. Uh, small r and large r, they're just the same number multiplied by n, right? But this is a hell to, <laughs> to try to fit this, and the other was easy, okay? So, so this kind of stuff can be very sensitive to parameter scales, okay? Can be very sensitive to parameter scales, so it means that you have to try a lot of stuff here and so on in order to get a, a good fit, okay? So uh, so you, you may have 
this is actually related to the previous one, right? So this L maxima here, it is affected by the CA of the parameters and so on. So even things that, uh, that look very dumb, right? So very, oh, this is, this makes no difference, but it does, okay? But it does, okay? So, uh, so it's something to be aware of, okay? Uh, and this is, this is it. Do you have questions? Uh, have some, a couple minutes for questions. Or are we hungry and uh, yeah. Okay, but there's coffee break here. Oh, it's pretty uh, generous, right? So, um, no questions. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it and thank you. And uh, well, let's see. Uh, I'm uh, eager to see your projects tomorrow, okay? So yeah, thank you. <laughs>